All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about how to monitor your modeler. That's right, we're gonna learn how to dial in our tones properly, monitoring them properly so that we sound good when we play live. We dial in tones at home, we wanna sound good when we play live. Let's get into it. All right, so the first thing you need to do is make sure you monitor your tone with as many different monitors as you have available to you. Jimmy, what do you mean by that? Well, when I first got started, all I had access to was a set of in-ear monitors like this. They hang over your ear like this, you plug it into your modeler, and then you can hear your tone. Like I said, I did this for years because it's all I had access to, and this is not a bad option. Plus, modelers are great for that. You can use headphone out. And so I'm gonna talk about several different headphone options you have for headphone out, and then we're gonna talk about a few other ways to monitor your tone. So the bottom of the barrel option if you're using headphones is probably using like an old set of Apple headphones or the cheapest skull candy headphones that you can use. Those are really inexpensive and do not really give you the full range of sound that you would want, but if you have nothing else, then use that. I'm using today's video to talk about a couple different products that have been sent to me, therefore it's sponsored, but I'm not getting paid to, and I haven't been told what to say. But KZ, the company here, has sent me a set of AS16 Pros to unbox and try out, and they wanted me to put them head to head with the CCA Duo. Now, I thought these were two different companies, and they might be, I'm a little confused, but the packaging is exactly the same. On some of the KZ stuff, if you have ever had a KZ set of in-ears, you'll know that their boxes look exactly like this. So, I don't know the relationship between KZ and CCA, other than the fact that it's probably the same company or at least a parent company owns them both. So let me open both of these and then I'll plug them in and hear how they sound and then we'll move on to the next type of monitor. At the time of this recording, the CCA Duos are $50, $49.99 and the KZAS 16 Pros are $73. If you are going to go the in-ear monitor route to listen to your tone, to dial in tones, just know that it's gonna come with a couple different options as far as the wiring. One very important thing to remember is that you don't want the one with a mic, say no microphone, because those have a different tip. It's no longer TRS, it's like TRRS, and in my experience, it has not produced the best results when plugging into a monitor mixer. The next important thing you're gonna need to use a set of headphones like this is a cable or an adapter because you will more than likely need to go from an eighth inch or the 3.5 millimeter to a quarter inch going into your unit. They also make a cable with quarter inch and it, you can get them 10 feet or 25 feet or even longer with the eighth inch female adapter side. Of course, I don't have one here, which would have been very nice for a video like this, but you just plug it into the back of your modeler and then you can hear your tones. All right, let me try these out real quick with a preset pulled up on the HX Stomp from the Expanse Pack. If you don't know, this video is also sponsored by myself, the Expanse Pack. It's an ever-growing collection of presets for all the Helix products, the HX Stomp, XL, XFX, HXFX, and the Pod Go. You pay once, but it's like a subscription, except you pay once and you get updates for life all the time. CCA Duo.
All right, so the difference between the CCA Duo and the AS16s Pro, um, I would say, is this worth the extra money, the extra $13, $23 to get these? I would say yes to me if I were choosing between the two because these had a more fuller sound. These have a lot more high end, um, but they don't sound bad. They sounded, they sounded great. This has a more natural feeling mid range without a piercing high end. So, but these are different and that may not help answer the question. Well, then how do I dial in my tone? What if I only had money for these and, and my tone is bright in my ears. So I make it a little duller because it seems bright, but then when I go play live, my, my tone is actually dull. Or what if I have headphones that lean more towards a more dull sound or a, a less high end brittle sound and a more warm tone that I might would create my presets with a little more high end in them. And then when I get to play live, my tone is harsh and digitally sounding. So how do we solve this problem? Well, this goes back to the first rule that I mentioned, and that is you need to monitor your sound with as many different monitors that you have available to you. If that is all you have, then when you get there and your tone is a little dull, then you need to crank the presence and crank some treble and deal with the room that you're in live in that moment. That's just how things are. If it's the opposite and your tone is a little harsh, then you need to back off things like treble and presence and turn up a cut and maybe apply a high cut. There are a bunch of different things you can do and I have other videos on the channel, but what other options do we have to monitor our sound here at home? Well, the next option that would be a step up from in-ears is using an over-the-ear headphone and my favorite brand is the Sennheiser HD 600s. I like these because they are open back they're very comfortable and they don't apply a strong EQ curve. Now, every set of speaker, no matter what it is, is going to apply some sort of EQ curve. It's going to take a little off the top or boost the mid range or boost the low end, which is something you've got to watch out for with those cheaper in-ear uh, monitors. People equate a lot of low end with good quality sound. And so especially some of those really cheap ones, they can boost the low end and that'll give you a false representation of what is actually happening to your guitar tone. And then when you get there live, you heard all this bass, so you didn't dial in a lot and then your tone is really too thin. So here are the Sennheiser HD 600s. Like I said, they're open back, which means that when I put them on, I can also hear myself talk and, and, and hear other things. There's pros and cons to open back. What I like about it is there's not a lot of bass buildup. If you cover your ears and try to talk, it sounds like you're covering your ears and trying to talk, like you're underwater. And what that can do is make you feel like there's bass buildup when there's actually not. So getting a good set of headphones like this can help that. But there might be times where you do want a closed back headphone and I have another sponsor. I have not opened these, these are brand new. It's the One Audio, I guess, Audio, Audio probably. Monitor 60s, they do make an open back. I think they're called the Monitor 80s. Hopefully they'll send those to me, I requested them, so we will see. But I wanted to try these out as well because this might be a good budget option. Where my Sennheisers were like over $300, these are $99. Nice little bag and they look really comfortable. Oh, what's cool is these sent two different headphones. One has a microphone attached to it with that TRRS. You can see it has too many of those little black lines on there. And they have a coily cable here. That's really nice. Oh, what's cool about these is it's universal. So on this side, on the left side, it takes a quarter inch. On the right side, it takes an eighth inch so that whatever you need, you just unplug the other one. So I'm going into the HX stomp, I would need the quarter inch, so I'll plug in my eighth inch. But if I wanted to listen in like a phone or a tablet that had the eighth inch jack, I would plug the quarter inch in and use the eighth inch in the device. That's, that's pretty cool. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention before I take a listen to these is that usually when I'm listening to headphones, and you can do this with uh, you know an in-ear monitor too, is instead of coming through the headphone out of my unit, like this example, the HX Stomp XL, which is an interface by itself. You can go out USB and, and use that unit as an interface. But I also have my own interface here. I have the Scarlett Focusrite 2i2, and it has a headphone out, and I feel like that gives me a, a better representation of what my tone actually is, because every headphone amp even the one in the focus right is going to apply some sort of EQ. That amp is is different. So here's what I mean in case that was confusing. A device like this with the HX Stomp has a headphone out right here and that has a preamp that is going to 
feed into your headphones. But when I go over to my interface, I'm actually leaving the outs that I would actually be sending front of house. So I feel like that gives me a more correct representation of my tone as opposed to just using the headphone out alone. Hope that makes sense. Another very important thing to mention here when you're A-Bing different headphones, uh, whether it's over the ear, you know, in-ear monitors or over the ear headphones is to know the impedance of your headphone. And what this is, is it measures the resistance. So it's, it's notated in ohms. And so these I just looked up have 38 ohms of resistance or impedance where my Sennheisers have 300. And what that means is it's going to take more volume to get those headphones to sound loud as compared to one of these or your in-ear monitors. And so if you're not careful, if you use something with a high impedance and you have the volume cranked so that it sounds normal, if you switch things out, you might blow your ears away because a lower impedance means it's not gonna take as much to get a higher volume. So be careful, protect your ears. <laughs> Monitor 60s. say and just remember sponsored because they gave it to me but they have no say in what I say about this but I am impressed for a an $80 set of headphones the build quality they look really nice I mean look how thick I mean just thick and comfortable and they, they sound great I'm excited to have these as an addition to the studio so it's not a and B when I did my Sennheisers because those are open back and sometimes with open back you can still hear like your depending on how loud your headphones are you can still hear things going on in the room including your string noise when you're strumming and because those are high impedance I crank my monitor uh, my focus right just to get a nice loud volume and with these just like I was saying I put it down to like 60% volume on my focus right to have about the same amount of volume so I would love to put these I would love to put the other ones the open back version head-to-head -head with those but I'm telling you if you want a set of budget friendly uh, over-the-ear headphones I, I'm recommending these now that I've tried them. Okay, so all of those solutions were directly to your ear solutions, but what about air moving in the room where you are? Speakers. Okay, one thing you can't do, you can't come out of your modeler that is modeling an amp and cab and send it through an amp that is an amp and cab because you would be sending your guitar signal through two amps and two cabs in series, not parallel. It's not doing some sort of like stereo thing. You'd be sending it through two amps and two cabs and that's gonna sound really bad. People ask that kind of stuff all the time and that's okay because they don't know, but just know you don't wanna send your guitar signal through two amps in series. So amps are not a good solution. Unless you bypass the amp and cab in your modeler, that is, and that's not what we're talking about today. So if amps aren't the solution, then what kind of speaker is? Well, what you would need is a an FRFR, full range flat response. This is a speaker that is different than a guitar cab speaker. A guitar cab speaker is designed to give you the frequencies that sound good with guitar, and you would think, well, don't we want that? Well, yes, but we're already modeling that in our modeler. We have an amp and a cab and a mic simulator through our modeler, so we don't want to send it through another one. Now we want a full range, so we have the full range of sound and flat response so it doesn't introduce any special EQ so that we are just taking what we made inside of our modeler and spreading it out to the world. So what kind of speakers are full range flat response? Well, PA systems, the sound system at your church. They also make FRFR cabinets that you can use and also 
Studio monitors are FRFR. These are speakers that are designed to give you the full frequency of whatever you're trying to listen to. And there you have it. At a minimum, you need a decent pair of in-ear monitors and you don't have to spend a lot of money. Even the ones I reviewed today, pretty inexpensive. Another very inexpensive one that if you don't have a lot of money and you need something now that will work that is decent is the KZ DQS. I'll have that link down below. Now, if you want to upgrade, I would highly suggest getting a set of over the ear headphones like my Sennheiser HD 600s, these One Audio Monitor 60s or the 80s that they have on their website, or even Bayer Dynamic makes like 770s, 880s, and 990s, I think are the model numbers. You can go check those out. And then from there, moving air in the room, look at different FRFRs. Get a set of studio monitors. These are the Rocket 5, the KRK Rocket 5s. You can spend a bunch of money getting eight inch Atom I can't remember the model number, but you can spend a bunch of money on studio monitors or you can spend money on an FRFR cap. You can even get two of them and have stereo if you want. Headrush makes them, Line 6 makes its own cab. It even has a catalyst amp that has like IR modeling in it. That's not what I'm talking about. That's different. Technically, I think the speaker's FRFR, but it also has cab modeling in it. So you wouldn't want to turn that off. I, I haven't played with those, but just know what you're getting into. And then the best thing you can do to dial in your tone for Sundays is go monitor your sound in the location you will be playing. So if you're like me, I'm a guitarist at a church. I play there every week. So I have access to the building. If you're not the worship leader, at least have a conversation with your audio engineer and come in a few minutes early or stay a few minutes late and say, Hey, can I walk around and hear my tone? If you have a wireless pack, that's even better. If not, you can use the looper on a Helix or the HX Stomp, or maybe your modeler might have one built in. Use a looper and play some different things and then walk around and hear how it sounds. Ask your audio guy to temporarily take everything off of your channel and then ask him what he would have to do to get it to sit well in a mix. And maybe you can get ahead of some of that and fix your sound in the unit. All right, if you have one of the Line 6 modelers, the Helix, HX Stomp, XL, HX FX, Podgo, if you have one of those and you wanna know more specifically how to dial in presets, amps, and cabs, and delay, and you don't wanna see a video, you wanna read something, I have a free download for you. It's called my Tone Secrets Guide. I'll link it down below. There's two different ones. There's one for the Podgo and then one for the Helix stuff. It's the Tone Secrets Guide. It's a PDF full of pictures and written step-by-step -step parameter adjustments that you can make to ensure that you have great tone. And hey, thanks for watching this video. And as always, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.